Hello and welcome to this video on how you can culture your yeast strain of choice using agar. Agar, or more accurately agar agar, is a gelatin-like substance that is used widely in microbiology as a semi-solid substrate. It is supplemented with a variety of nutrients, minerals, sugars and more to support a wide range of microbes. In this case it is a rather obviously for yeast. The reason you might wish to use agar is that it can support and select for a small number of yeast cells, a good way to, let's say, harvest rare, not available, or temperamental yeast strains. Where you could just swap out to another yeast strain that will not die, it doesn't always work out the way you want it to, which is why live beer, cider, meat, or other beverages can be used for this as well. For example, if you want to recreate an authentic beer using an authentic style with the authentic yeast, if you can get a bottle of that beer with live yeast in it, you can at least get the yeast strain and work from there. That's just an example of one source of yeast that you can grow up and use, there are others. The similar approaches are used for archaeological yeast samples and so on. And now we're going to show you three ways to use agar. One will give conniptions to any microbiologist, while the latter two are, strictly speaking, a, a proper way to culture yeast on an agar plate. Exaggerating what we're showing you, but hopefully it's clear enough based on this that you could do it yourself. First we have the wrong way. This is to take your sample of a dried yeast for instance and literally pour it onto the plate. You will need to make a plate for this though, and every other method we're going to describe. We have gone with a very basic approach, a mixture of yeast, nutrient, glucose, agar, and water. It's simple but enough for the yeast to get it started, and that's the key here. Now that we add the powdered yeast to this, a light sprinkle over the surface, this should create a wide mass of yeast colonies within a day or two, certainly not very long. What we do need to do is keep this warm at between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius depending on the yeast strain. And maintain this temperature for between 24 and 48 hours. At the end, you should have a very obvious yeast growth. If you leave this or any other petri dish open or culturing for too long, you start to grow mystery things. It's like how leaving food out for a short time is okay, and it is still good for you, but if you leave it out for too long you get something nasty growing and you definitely don't want to be eating it. Of course, as mentioned, this approach is a somewhat terrible idea, both waiting too long and this method as a whole. And now for a more proper method. This involves making a sort of liquid culture of your yeast. First you do this and then you plate it. It's ideal if you want to culture liquid cultures to start with, or you want to propagate a live beverage strain. Start with your agar as already described. This is adequate to grow your yeast initially. You can, if you so choose, then culture that in a liquid yeast suspension, which is what you want. What you do from that is you pour a small amount of the yeast solution over the plate. It can be a starter culture of your chosen yeast strain, a sample of the beer, or any other means you have of obtaining your yeast. We won't go into creating a liquid inoculation for that purpose. How you get it is your business. The difference is that unlike the powdered method, this should form a thin film, and not several clumps, and certainly not be a mass. Further, you want a consistent thin film across the entire plate. As before, keep it between 20 and 30 degrees, and maintain this for up to 48 hours. At the end of that time, you should have a lawn or mat of colonies growing. Finally, we have the streaking method. This does not involve naked people, but instead streaks of the culture. This method is generally used as a step after the plate has grown using a liquid culture or other source. Generally speaking, you have a relatively large sample you're trying to isolate out, a particular subset of. The plate you're growing will have colonies, and these will be very obvious circles. They're useful as you can choose one of these circles and that will give you that particular yeast strain. However, if you have a lawn, then you need to do streaking. But you'll also need to continue to replate the yeast every 48 hours with this streaking method until you get those separate and disparate colonies. Now, this is done in a relatively straightforward manner. First, you find an isolated colony or take a sample of the plate in a loop or similar tool. Make sure to either wash this in alcohol or flame it first to prevent contamination. Now smear the loop with your inoculum over the plate, across from one edge to the other. Now change the direction by 90 degrees. Smear to the edge this way, repeat again, and then again. This will lead to a very spread out yeast colonies, 
arguably with increasing space between them. After 48 hours, you will have small round colonies that you can select from to grow your yeast strain. The importance here is that by streaking and gradually smearing and stretching out the sample further, you get smaller and smaller numbers of yeast cells that will give rise to that colony, and therefore the colonies will be further apart. These are the three ways you can grow your yeast, and no matter which you choose, there are some, let's say, important notes to make. One, it does take time. Allow at least 24 hours, if not more, for the yeast to grow. Unlike other microbes that can have a generation time sub-30 minutes, yeast needs 12 hours per generation, and so culturing it can take longer. Second, keep the plates upside down. This avoids the condensation, contaminating your yeast, and possibly leading to food poisoning. Third, select only known good colonies. When in doubt, do not propagate. Fourth and finally, this is not a long-term method for storage or development. It requires agar, is not nutrient-rich in the long term, more so if we're talking over that 48-hour window. It requires work, and is generally worse in growing a culture and freezing it if you intend to store for the long term. Overall, this should show you how it is relatively straightforward to grow your own yeast from a very limited sample, as long as you're willing to put in a little bit of time and effort. But the bit of time and effort required is just that. It's mostly waiting, and waiting can be one of the harder things to do. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please do post any comments, questions, or suggestions you have below.